Hello class, welcome to day nine of George's Marvelous Medicine. When we last left off, there was a bunch of farm animals that they grew using George's Mar Marvelous Medicine from the pigs and the cows and the chickens, even a horse, the sheep. And grandma was stuck in the roof and I had you guys predict what sort of things they might do for her while she's in the roof. Um, some of you said they might give her old medicine. Some of you said maybe they'd make up a new medicine for her to take. And a few of you said things like pulling her out or going up on the roof to go get her. Chapter 10 is called A Crane for Grandma. Grandma, from high up on the rooftop, could see everything that was going on. And she didn't like what she saw. She wanted to be the center of attention, and nobody was taking the slightest notice of her. Ah, so while the medicine made her grow, it didn't really make her any different. She's still pretty self-centered. George and Mr. Cranky were running around and getting excited about the enormous animals. Mr. Mrs. Cranky was washing up in the kitchen, and Grandma was alone on the rooftop. Hey, you! she yelled. George, get me a cup of tea this minute, you idle little beast! Yeah, and she's still pretty mean, too. Looks like the medicine just changed the outside. Don't listen to that old goat, Mr. Cranky said. She's stuck where she is, and a good thing, too. Hmm, sounds like the dad doesn't like Grandma very much, either. But we can't leave her up there, Dad, George said. What if it rains? George, Grandma yelled. Oh, you horrible little boy, you disgusting little worm. Fetch me a cup of tea at once. And a slice of currant cake. We'll have to get her out, Dad, George says. She won't give us any peace if we don't. Mr. Cranky came outside. Sorry, Mrs. Cranky came outside. And she agreed with George. She's my own mother, she said. She's a pain in the neck, Mr. Cranky said. I don't care, Mrs. Cranky said. I'm not leaving my own mother sticking out through the roof for the rest of her life. So, in the end, Mr. Cranky telephoned the crane company and asked them to send their biggest crane to the house at once. The crane arrived one hour later. It was on wheels, and there were two men inside. The crane men climbed up onto the roof and put ropes under Grandma's arms. Then she was lifted right up through the roof. In a way, the medicine had done Grandma good. It had not made her any less grumpy or bad-tempered. But it seemed to have cured all, all her aches and pains. So here is a picture with the crane lifting up Grandma by her armpits. So here's the long skinny body of Grandma with her head at the top and the crane underneath each of her arms. And she was suddenly as frisky as a ferret. As soon as the crane had lowered her on to the ground, she ran over to George. And to the huge pony Jack Frost, and jumped onto his back. The ancient old hag, who was now as tall as the, a house, then galloped about the farm on a gigantic pony, jumping over trees and sheds and shouting, out of my way, clear the decks, stand back you miserable midgets or I'll trample you to death, and other silly things like that. So now that she's big and she's out, she's getting people's attention. Here's a picture of her riding the horse. You can see the rooftops at the bottom. You can see grandma on top of the horse right above. But because George was now much 
too tall, sorry, because Grandma was now much too tall to get back into the house, she had to sleep that night in the hay barn with the mice and rats. Here's a picture of sleeping Grandma. And the little mice in the front. Chapter 11, Mr. Cranky's Great Idea. The next day, George's father came down to breakfast in a state of greater excitement than ever. I've been awake all night thinking about it, he cried. About what, Dad? George asked him. About your marvelous medicine, of course. We can't stop now, my boy. We must start making more of it at once, more and more. The giant stewing pot had been completely emptied the day before because there had been so many sheep and pigs and cows and bullocks to be dosed. But why do we need more, Dad? George asked. We've done all our own animals already. And we've made Grandma feel as frisky as a ferret, even though she does have to sleep in the hay barn. My dear boy, cried Mr. Killy Cranky. We need barrels and barrels of it. Tons and tons. Then we will sell it to every farmer in the world so that all of them can have giant animals. We will build a marvelous medicine factory and sell the stuff in bottles for $10 a piece. We'll become rich and you will be famous. Wait a minute, Dad, George said. There's no waiting, cried Mr. Cranky, working himself up so much that he put butter in his coffee and milk on his toast. <laughs> so he got him backwards. Don't you understand what this tremendous invention of yours is going to do to the world? Nobody will ever go hungry again. Why won't they? asked George. Because one giant cow will give 50 buckets of milk every day, cried Mr. Cranky, waving his arms. One giant chicken will make 100 fried chicken dinners. One giant pig will give you a thousand, a thousand pork chops. It's tremendous, my dear boy. It's fantastic. It'll change the world. But wait a minute, Dad, George said again. Don't keep saying, wait a minute, shouted Mr. Cranky. There isn't a minute to wait. We must get cracking at once. Here's a picture of George's dad being excited at the breakfast table. Do calm down, my dear, Mrs. Cranky said from the other end of the table. And stop putting marmalade on your cornflakes. Marmalade is like jelly. Oh, forget my cornflakes, cried Mr. Cranky, leaping up from his chair. Come on, George, let's get going. And the first thing we'll do is make one more stew pot as a tester. But Dad, said little George, the trouble is... Sounds like George is trying to tell his dad something, but he's not really listening. There won't be any trouble, my boy, Miss, said Mr. Cranky. How can there possibly be any trouble? All you've got to do is put the same stuff into the pot as you did yesterday. And while you're doing it, I'll write down each and every item. That's how we'll get the magic recipe. But Dad, George said, please listen to me. Why don't you listen to him, Mrs. Cranky said. The boy's trying to tell you something. Have any guesses of what George might be trying to tell his dad? But Mr. Cranky was too excited to listen to anyone except himself. And then, he cried, when the new mixture is ready, we'll test it out on our old hen just to make sure we got everything right. And after that, we'll all shout hooray and build a giant factory. But dad... Come on, then. What's that you want to say? I can't 
possibly remember all the hundreds of things I put into the pot to make the medicine, George said. Of course you can, my dear boy, cried Mr. Cranky. I'll help you. I'll jog your memory. We'll get, you'll get it in the end. You see if you don't. Now then, what was the very first thing you put in? I went up to the bathroom first, George says. I used a lot of things in the bathroom and on Mommy's dressing table. Come on then, cried Mr. Cranky. Up we go to the bathroom. When they got there, they found, of course, a whole lot of empty tubes and empty aerosol cans and empty bottles. That's great, said Mr. Cranky. That tells us exactly what you used. If anything's empty, it means you used it. So Mr. Cranky started making a list of everything that was empty in the bathroom. Then they went to Mr. Crank Mrs. Cranky's dressing table. A box of powder, said Mr. Cranky, writing it down. Helga's hair set, flowers of turnips perfume. Terrific. This is going to be easy. Where did you go next? The lawn to the laundry room, George said. But are you sure we haven't missed anything up here, Dad? That's up to you, my boy, Mr. Cranky said. Have I? I don't think so, George said. So down they went to the laundry room, and once again Mr. Cranky wrote down all the names of the empty bottles and cans. My goodness me, what a mass of stuff you used, he cried. No wonder it did magic things. Is that the lot? No, Dad, it's not. George said, and he led his father out to the shed where the animal medicines were kept and showed him five big empty bottles on the top shelf. Mr. Cranky wrote down all their names. Anything else? Mr. Cranky asked. Little George scratched his head and thought and thought, but he couldn't remember having put anything else in. Mr. Killy Cranky leapt into his car and drove down to the village and bought new bottles and tubes and cans of everything on his list. He then went to the vets and got a fresh supply of all the animal medicines that George's, George had used. Now show me how you did it, George, he said. Come along, show me exactly how you mix them all together. Chapter 12 Marvelous medicine number two. They were in the kitchen now, and the big stewing pot was on the stove. All the things Mr. Cranky had bought were lined up near the sink. Come along, my boy, cried Mr. Killy Cranky. Which one did you put in first? This one, George said. Golden gloss hair shampoo. He emptied the bottle into the pot. Now the toothpaste, George went on, and the shaving soap, and the face cream, and the nail polish. Keep at it, my boy, cried Mr. Cranky, dancing around the kitchen. Keep putting them in. Don't stop. Don't pause. Don't hesitate. It's a pleasure, my dear fellow, to watch you work. One by one, George poured and squeezed things into the stewing pot. With everything so close at hand, the, job, the whole job didn't take him more than ten minutes. But when it was all done, the pot didn't somehow seem to be quite as full as it had been the first time. Hmm, can you remember anything that he missed? Or any whole rooms that he didn't go to? Now, what did you do? cried Mr. Cranky. Did you stir it? I boiled it, George said, but not for long. And I stirred it as well. So Mr. Cranky lit, lit the gas under the pot and George stirred the mixture with the same long wooden spoon he had used before. It's not brown enough, George said. Wait a minute. I know what I've forgotten. What? cried Mr. Cranky. Tell me quick, because we've forgotten, if we've forgotten one tiny thing, then it won't work. At least, not in the same way. A quart of brown gloss paint, George said. That's what I've forgotten. Mr. Killy Cranky shot out of the house into his car like a rocket. He sped down to the village and bought paint and rushed back again. He opened the can in the kitchen and handed it to George. George poured the paint into the stewing pot. Aha! That's better, George said. 
That's more like the right color. It's boiling, cried Mr. Cranky. It's boiling and bubbly, George. Is it ready? It's ready, George said. At least I hope it is. Right, shouted Mr. Cranky, hopping about. Let's test it. Let's give some to a chicken. My heavens alive. Why don't you calm down a bit, Mrs. Cranky said, coming into the kitchen. Calm down, cried Mr. Cranky. You expect me to calm down? And here we are mixing up the greatest medicine ever discovered in the history of the world? Come along, George. Dip a cupful out of the pot and get a spoon, and we'll give some to a chicken, just to make absolutely certain we've got the correct mixture. Hmm. So we'll stop there for today. To yourself, do you think this medicine this round is going to work?